So this video is going to go into a uh, external H-bridge circuit, both the circuit design and the printed circuit layout for a uh, mainly a motor controller, but really can drive any uh, inductive or resistive load. But before I get into that, I just want to say, um, hope everyone had uh, good holidays. I was hoping to keep on like a every week, every other week schedule, but time just kind of got away from me. But I'm going to try to get back into that schedule now. And as always, if you have any suggestions for future videos or anything, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed, please do that as well. So this H-bridge is going to be similar to this one on screen, like a uh, just a standard cheap uh, motor controller that you find on Amazon. These, they say, are for uh, up to 3 amps max or continuous at 2 amps. The driver that I'm using is only rated for 800 uh, milliamps, so it'll be a little bit lower powered, and I did that just because I didn't want to get bogged down in thermal calculations for it. But if that's something you do want to see, let me know and I can go into a more high-powered circuit in the future. Um, but it does have, uh, you have to have EMF protection, which makes it a little bit interesting. And I'm going to do kind of the same pin layout, just with a bunch of little connectors and headers to attach the wires to. If you're doing this yourself for an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, Obviously, you can do whatever type of connectors you would prefer. So the H-bridge that I decided on is just a Toshiba TC78H62. Uh, it's a pretty standard H-bridge. It has uh, two half bridges, so it can drive either a single stepper motor or a set of DC motors. And you can also use these for like a linear actuator is a common use case for them. Uh, one thing with H bridges I mentioned earlier that you really need to look into is if it has any EMF protection. Since when driving a motor, it's considered an inductive load. When that motor loses power, when you stop it, the magnetic field that it created is gonna force a big voltage spike on the terminals. And if you don't have that taken into consideration and the chip doesn't take that into consideration, it's gonna blow up the IC. So this chip does not have any EMF protection. So I'll go into some uh, strategies to alleviate that. Uh, other than that, it's again, a pretty standard chip. You have your logic uh, to control the direction and if it's breaking or just no power to it. So to get started, again, I like working on the power first. So for this, I am going to use a 12 volt flag as the motor power. It doesn't obviously have to be 12 volt that's coming in but it just helps to keep them separate from the logic level power. And then uh, for the inputs, just gonna use a standard library part for two pin headers. So this is our motor power is what I'll call it. And with KiteCAD, you have to have a power flag on every input power source. I'm not going to put it on ground here because I'm going to put it on the logic level ground. Either way, you just need to have it on one input. So the next thing we will do is the logic and the logic. Um, I'm going to use a five volt flag. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly five volts, just using it to separate the nets. Uh, this chip works on uh, like two, two volts and change up to five and a half. So it can work on the Raspberry Pi or any 3.3 logic as well. It doesn't have to be an Arduino or similars five volts. So with this one, we will put the power flag on both of them and then align these up. So now our chip has power coming in for it and our motor has a separate power supply. 
and of course we could have a um, power supply a uh, singular one and have a voltage regulator supply the chip but again to keep it more simplistic and to not have to get into uh, using the same power supply for both the motor and the logic I just kept it simple with separate supplies so with the chip this is a part that I just made earlier uh, for the TC78 with this, we can throw the ground in and the two non-connect flags for the non-connect pins. And with this, the VM is what is called, what they call their voltage supply for the motor. The VCC is the voltage supply for the chip power itself. So that goes to five volts. And as always with any, uh, uh, logic level component or any IC really you need to have a uh, decoupling capacitor as close to the chip as you can get to help supply instantaneous voltages and to help with current spikes so a good value is just a tenth of a microfarad and we also are going to need a cap on the motor supply, but I'll get into that later when we talk about the uh, how to combat the EMF. So I'm going to move this over some. And now for the inputs here and the outputs, I'm just going to label them as flags, uh, as a global flag, so we can move them in a different block. So I'll go through these now. Okay, so there are all the uh, flags done. The standby puts the power down. The enable A and PHAA are for the A channel, and then the corresponding B are for the B channel. So with these, we can have a output um, pins over here, just like these. So for the uh, logic control, we'll need a five pin right here and we can just copy these over like this and I'm just gonna put them in a little bit different order which corresponds to the physical pins on the chip just to make routing a little bit easier in the future okay and now we can name it uh, something like logic control now we need our power outputs which will just be two two pin headers and we will grab these So now if you are driving a purely resistive load, this probably would work for you. Um, but since this is more intended to be a uh, motor driver, there's a few things we need to take into account. Okay, so to explain back EMF, I figured the best way to do it was to have an explicit diagram like this, since in our actual schematic, we're using labels and it won't be as clear. So if we're using a single one of these channels to drive, I have drawn uh, just an inductor coil, but it can simulate a DC motor. So when this motor is running and we have 12 volts here and ground here, the motor generates a magnetic field around it. The longer it goes on, the stronger the magnetic field is until there's no changing uh, flux within the field. So there's no problem here. But when you go and stop the motor or change the, anything that causes that magnetic field to collapse, it will do everything in its power to keep that current flowing. And what that means it'll do is it'll switch the voltage 
applied on the motor and the applied voltage can be two to three to four times as powerful as the original voltage that was applied. So now it, we could have 36 volts on this terminal reference to ground. So if we have no way to discharge that, it's going to go back into our H bridge and destroy the circuit because it can't handle that type of output, that type of input on its output pins. So we have to do something to combat it. So this is an example of a really common way to handle a uh, back EMF. They're called flyback diodes. And it's a little more complicated with an H bridge because you don't know which way the voltage is gonna be each time. But we'll keep the voltage here the same as before. So if we have 12 volts here and ground here, this is uh, not forward biasing. So nothing can flow here, nothing can flow there. Same with this. So it doesn't affect the motor at all, it runs. Now, if the magnetic field collapses when we take power away from the motor, the voltages flip again. But now since this is a really high voltage, it forward biases this diode. So it flows into here and then we'll go back around to the main power rail and flow into here and complete the circuit. So it allows for the uh, charge to get discharged through these diodes in a loop that bypasses our chip. So as long as your diodes are rated at a high enough voltage, there's no concern. You're going to be able to discharge any of that current. And it's the same whether we have a positive voltage at the top, because then it'll just discharge up into here into your main power rail. So that is the main way you can combat back EMF. So what I'm gonna do is just take the uh, diodes that I had in that demonstration and throw the output flags onto them. Uh, and this again is why I didn't do it this way to explain it because it looks a little bit, uh, it's not near as intuitive when it's all just abstracted with flags. Okay, so now we have our flyback diodes on each one of these uh, outputs. And then the last thing that we can do is throw a nice big electrolytic cap on our input uh, motor uh, supply to the H bridge. And what this does is it allows some of that excess charge that I talked about before to not always have to go back to the power rail. And this can absorb a lot of that, again, kind of taking some strain off of the H bridge. And it also acts as a energy reservoir for the supply itself. So it's not necessary, but it's good to have. And a rule of thumb that I've heard is to have like around 100 microfarads per amp. Uh, that's kind of the value that I've used for several H bridges in the past. Uh, and it has seemed to have been a pretty good value. So since this is about a one amp-ish H bridge, we'll throw on a 100 microfarad cap. And that pretty much wraps up the circuit design for this H bridge. So the next video will be a um, going through the actual circuit layout, the PCB layout itself, and the considerations we have to make with uh, some of the higher power traces and stuff like that. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.